Before we get into today's rumors roundup, what do you guys want more coverage of as the NFL offseason moves along? D for the NFL draft, T for trade rumors and news and buzz, or F for NFL free agency coverage? Sound off in the comments section. There's no football today on Sunday. That does feel pretty weird, but we have some NFL rumors and news and trade conversation to get into. Let's begin with one of the biggest NFL storylines, the Justin Fields, will they, won't they trade, draft Caleb Williams, different QB, whatever. The Fields trade rumors are not going to go away. In fact, they'll probably ramp up with the NFL Combine just over a week away. It is undoubtedly in the Bears' best interest to make a decision on their quarterback and their plans that are going overall pick sooner rather than later, just like they did around this time last year when they flipped that number one overall pick to the Panthers and got, among other things, the number one overall pick this year. I would not be surprised if trade talks ramp up in the coming days and weeks, and I would be a little surprised the Bears hadn't made a decision, whatever that is, uh, by NFL free agency, because you want to know and you want to be able to maximize your hypothetical return and potential interest in parties for the number one overall pick, or maybe more likely, for Justin Fields. If the Bears didn't have the number one overall pick, this might be a very, and would be a very different conversation. But they don't. And Fields, both this year and last year, has shown ability. He has shown upside, has shown flashes, showed arm strength, mobility, has shown potentiality of being a franchise QB. But he hasn't quite taken the full step forward you know, compared to other quarterbacks in his draft class before, after, etc. And the Bears have a unique opportunity to reset at the quarterback position and get a better, highly touted prospect, I'm sure, in their own evaluations, general media eva evaluations too, and reset the quarterback contract timeline. Because if you're keeping fields, you're going to pay him, right? Because you, otherwise, what's the point? Either, either he's your guy or he's not, and you're going to pay him big money or you're not going to. Or you can reset. It is a franchise-defining moment here for Chicago. The general buzz and vibe has been they're going to take Caleb Williams at number one overall, who did take a bit of a step back this past season. Supporting cast, I think even play calling from Lincoln Riley was a negative in that area. But the upside is incredibly immense, even more so than what it was for Fields. More on Fields to come. But will the Bears trade him away? Y for yes, N for no. This is the pinned comment on today's video. If the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. My prediction is yes, they will go down that path. And it would be very different for me, who I still believe in fields, if the Bears didn't have the number one overall pick, if they didn't have the number two pick. If they were picking even like three, I'd probably say, ah, you're better off keeping fields and just drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. there. If you were picking... At your normal spot, in just barely into the top 10, be a no-brainer. You're giving Fields at least one more year, and you're adding some more pieces around him. But the contract path is now better. You're buying more time on the cheaper quarterback contracts than having to pay him massive money. And I think Williams is a better prospect than Fields was coming out. And Fields is still kind of in the flashes stage, as opposed to, ah, we really truly know what he is. I think some coaching staff gets some blame there in Chicago, which we'll get to in a minute here but Fields also has not quite fully developed yet. Now, there are some new odds for Fields' 2024 NFL team. Mentioning the coaching staff, the Raiders have the OC, which I'm not sure is, is a good thing for them. They're plus 750. The Falcons are the betting favorite, and that's a fun man. Fields, London, Pitts, and B. John Robinson. That's four top half first round picks right there. That, that, that's got to materialize there. The Steelers, we'll talk about them more in depth in a little bit. I think the presence of other Smith is a negative because Smith alleged it was not that high on fields uh, when the Falcons had that top pick. The Jets, plus 1,200. You're going to sit them for a year? I'm not so sure. Seattle, plus 1,400. They're going to something to keep Geno, but I think it was trade Geno, too. Patriots and Commanders picking it two and three. The best pure value is Patriots at plus 2,000. It's a really low line. I'd be a little surprised, but I think it should be a little bit maybe... Maybe flip, flip the Jets and the Patriots is, is a more fair uh, potential line there. Now, today's show is made possible by prize picks. There's no more football, but that is okay. 
Because Prize Picks has picks for a ton of different sports and esports. It's daily fantasy made easy. You're picking two to six player stat projections, more than, less than, and watching those winnings roll in. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. I'd been trying some golf prize picks. Has not hit very well for me so far. I don't think I've had a bad week because I've had other, other good weeks at this. Uh, so reach out to my guy Tyler Jones, our NASCAR fan here at Chad Sports. Here is his NASCAR prize picks. I'm due for the Daytona 500. Now delayed, of course, till Monday. It, it says Sunday, but it obviously got bumped back to Monday. Joey Logano, we're doing fantasy scores then, by the way. More than 25 and a half. Denny Hamlin, more, de, more than 32 and a half. And Tyler Reddick, more than 20 and a half. I like the flex play. That way, you know, I, I can kind of balance it all out in the event of the eventual wreck that happens at Daytona and in the event of, you know, blown tie or whatever. And I can still get one wrong. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. Let's go more in depth here on the Steelers. Some noteworthy reporting coming out of Pittsburgh. The Steelers quarterback plan very much remains uncertain. Some in the organization want Mason Rudolph. Some seem to want Kenny Pickett. But Rudolph's going to be a free agent, by the way. Pickett was the first round pick a few seasons ago, and, or in 2023, and the results of 2022, and the results have not been very good. Reportedly, the team does not want to sign a starting caliber quarterback. More on that in a little bit. Pickett's numbers, oh boy. Uh, you're talking about 62.6% .6 completion percentage, it's one to one T to interception ratio. That's not it, man. That's like not even good backup numbers. Speaking of the backup, Mason Ruff is 3-0 as a starter in the regular season. Really good completion percentage. Hit some big plays downfield. You know, one TD a game is not ideal. You know, we're averaging a little over 200 yards per game. Okay, it's fine. Uh, no interceptions. I, I think you're kind of getting fooled a little bit. If, we, if, we're, if we're assuming Rudolph can be a top-end starter. Better than Pickett? That's very, very doable there. More on the don't want to sign a starter thing here in a moment. But who do you think starts quarterback for the Steelers in 2024? Lots of choose your own adventure paths. Sound off in the comments section. Now, Jerry Dulock is one of the top Steelers reporters. He wrote this. In any event, the Steelers are not interested in bringing in a quarterback who wants to be a starter. That would include Justin Fields and Kirk Cousins and probably even Russell Wilson, who has a connection with the Steelers. They are committed to giving Kenny Pickett a third year to see if he is the guy to do more than just win a playoff game, something that they haven't done in a franchise record seven years. Interesting, since uh, you're a consistent 9-10 to win team with bad quarterback play. There's also one name that is not mentioned in that report. It's Fields and Cousins and Wilson, guys who have been linked to Pittsburgh. One more name who has been linked pretty heavily, and I would not be surprised that is the path they go down, Ryan Tannehill, who has spent the last several seasons with the Tennessee Titans, had a great 2020 campaign, and his numbers have fallen off each and every game since then. And he gives them a better veteran quarterback option than some of their previous seasons, and he's better than Mitchell Trubisky, who already got cut, by the way. But I feel like if you walk into the year with, you know, some combination of Pickett, Tannehill, and Rudolph, well, they, they, they might win 9 and 10 games because that's what they always do under Mike Tomlin. We're not going to be a real contender with that. Now we will have tons of offseason coverage for you guys right here on the channel. It's the news, the draft, the trades, the free agency, the rumors, etc. that we mentioned earlier. Hit that sub button for more free NFL videos. Let's move to the Raiders here as it's almost certain they'll have a new starting quarterback. As you probably saw over the weekend, Jimmy Garoppolo is getting suspended. Uh, two games for PEDs. Uh, as a joke aside, I think if you're taking PEDs and you still lose a job to Aiden O'Connell, we should just allow whatever those performance-enhancing drugs were because they clearly didn't work well enough. Anyway, back on topic here. Uh, he's going to get cut. We, we know that going in, which leaves Aiden O'Connell and Brian Hoyer as the under-contract quarterbacks in Las Vegas. And you would assume, as all Raiders report has vindicated, another challenger, if not outright, given the job option. One name that stands out? LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler saying this. 
Jaden Daniels out of LSU is a name to watch. I've talked to a few teams who have pointed out Antonio Pierce, who was with him at ASU back in the day, loves him. Of course, he went to LSU, won the Heisman, could be a top three pick. Raiders pick 13. They would have to make a huge jump to get up there and get him, but it's at least a possibility. Now, I do wonder how much of this is, well, they played together and other NFL sources not tied to the Raiders connecting dots, which is valid, by the way. What do you think is the percent chance the Raiders trade up to draft Jaden Daniels? Sound off for me in the comment section right now. Daniels took a massive jump this year. 50 total touchdowns, four interceptions, an electric dual threat who I wish would not take as many crazy hits as he has a tendency to do. Got better over the course of his career. Not great end at, at, at Arizona State, and there was the very viral of players didn't, teammates didn't want him anymore. I think that was maybe just more of like, well, if he's gone, then screw him. We don't care. But he turned into a really good quarterback at LSU. Finally had some stability, and look what ends up happening. Now, as for a trade-up, let's assume to make this feasible, Bears and Commanders go in some order, Caleb Williams or Drake May, uh, whatever, or new quarterback at number one goes, new team at number one goes uh, QB, whatever. Patriots, Cardinals, Chargers, Giants. In theory, the Giants could want to get Jaden Daniels. So you got to jump them, right? Chargers at five. Feel like you're not going to have an in-division team help you get your franchise QB. Unless they're like, this guy's terrible, we're going to do it, which I think would be a pretty surprising eval there. So what you're doing there is jump into three or four, getting ahead of those teams, or those other teams at, at, at five and six. And I think the right trade I look at here is the Trey Lance trade. Not that different, right? Raiders picking 13, Dolphins j jumped back to 12, Niners went up to number three, took Trey Lance, for three threes and a three. That is a very cost-prohibitive trade. That is a very expensive deal to go down. Now, in the event that something starts to slide and, you know, maybe quarterbacks don't go one, two, three, and the Giants pass on one and the Falcons are sitting there at eight and they maybe already don't have one yet, maybe you jump to seven and it becomes a little bit more palatable with the Titans. But the cost involved, is one of the bigger issues. That's why I wouldn't be shocked if the Raiders went out and got a veteran quarterback in free agency instead.